This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. We've got an old friend here. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note, a 5.3 inch phablet, shall we say. It's part phone, part tablet. Works, does everything a phone should do, and uh, no surprises there, but what it isn't cool about it is it's on T-Mobile this time. So T-Mobile people rejoice. You can have your 42 megabit per second HSPA plus 4G on this phone. Carrier supported, carrier approved, and we're gonna look at it now. So here it is, the Samsung Galaxy Note on T-Mobile. One big phone coming at you, 5.3 inch display, 1280 by 800 resolution. Same as the Galaxy Note International version and the AT&T version. Yes, that's the same resolution that you would find on a 10 inch Android tablet. So lots of pixels. Fortunately, Android handles scaling very well, so obviously you're not looking at things that are way too small to see or anything like that. But image quality, lovely. Text quality, pretty good. Even though this has a Super AMOLED HD display. Now, some of you love Super AMOLED displays, but the thing about the Super AMOLED, that's not the Super AMOLED Plus, is, well, it's a pentile matrix, so you have fewer subpixels, not as sharp. But Samsung, well, this was their flagship phone for the end of 2011, the international version, and they really put a lot of effort into making as high quality a display as they possibly could with Super AMOLED. So, what we have here is much less of the blue color cast that we see on other Super AMOLED phones from Samsung, and that includes the Galaxy S3, and very nice sharp text. Uh, really, I have no complaints here. I look at it closely, I read ebooks on it, and I don't say, wow, look at those pixely nasty fonts. No, quite the opposite. It's a very nice display. It's bright, it's reasonably outdoor viewable. Super AMOLED's not as viewable as certain LCD technologies or IPS outdoors, but works just fine, very pretty. And you can see here we have our usual Android with multiple home screens, and this is running Android Android OS 4.04 .04, Ice Cream Sandwich with obviously Samsung TouchWiz on top. And this is a version of TouchWiz that I actually enjoy. Uh, I really with the Galaxy S3, you know, I started to feel that Samsung was going maybe a little over the top with software just for software's sake. It started to seem a little bit gimmicky, some of the things that they're adding on. Here, all the customizations, they're good, they're for usability, or they're for supporting the S Pen. Pens right in here. There's actually a place for which is nice. A lot of Android tablets, for example, don't have a place for the pen, so you're guaranteed you're to not bring it with you or to lose it as quickly as possible. And this little guy has one button on it, usually used for the erase function. They managed to fit the Samsung logo on the end there. You can see that. And this has an active digitizer, dual digitizer. So it's a Wacom digitizer that works with this. This is an active pen, pressure sensitivity, precision. It's not a capacitive stylus, which is kind of, well, just one step better than writing and painting with your finger. And it has a capacitive touch screen too. So best of both worlds. And given the large size of this, it can fun function as your pocket notepad or sketch pad. It really makes a lot of sense. Before we dig into the S Pen, we'll just take a look around the phone. As you can see, I have a big hand. This fills it. This is a big phone, folks. It's for 5.3 inch display. That means it's going to take up some space in your palm. We have the four capacitive buttons down here. Originally, this was designed for gingerbread when it first came out. That's what it ran. So we have the traditional gingerbread-esque buttons here for search, back, home, and menu. Of course, the functions have been updated for ICS, so some things are different from gingerbread. If you touch here, you can do wallpaper management, you can get to search. I don't know why search is there again, honestly. Notifications, you can edit your home screen, which is neat. You can actually create folders and stuff like that, even before ICS came in with support for that kind of thing. And you can get to all your full set of settings right here. Home is obvious. If you press and hold, that's how you get your traditional ice cream sandwich style application manager. So you can get to apps quickly that you have running. If you don't want one anymore, you can just swipe it away. Take it out of the list. Back button is your back button. And search is, well, it's search. And you can choose to either use your voice search, voice talk if you press and hold it, or if you just do a regular quick tap, you go into regular search. And happily, at least so far, unlike the Galaxy S3, this has not lost the universal search. Some, a feature that was actually taken away from the US Galaxy S3 is because Samsung wanted to avoid Apple suing them over search technology. Pretty ironic there that basically a built-in Google function having to do with search uh, becomes something that Apple might win in a court case. But anyway, that, that's why search disappeared from the US Galaxy S3. It's still here, though. you got the universal search. It's not just going to search the web when you hit that. So that's nice. You can search your contacts and other stuff. In other words, Galaxy Note is available in... Uh, I don't know if you call this dark blue or black only. There's not going to be a white version, unfortunately. 
It's $249 with a contract, standard two-year contract, and it's $599 without. So it's priced the same as the note on AT&T. It will be available August 8th. Side of the phone, kind of a shiny dark color metal. Power buttons right here. Headphone jack up here, microphone hole. Kind of nice shiny looking, it looks a little bit like metal. Volume controls right here, almost diametrically opposed to the power buttons. You know how I love that. I tend to actually squeeze one when I mean to squeeze the other on the other side, but say la vie. Micro USB port at the bottom, your S Pen is there, another microphone hole. And the back is matte plastic with a texture. No change there from previous versions of the Galaxy Note. Really, very little, if anything, is changed on this other than the software carrier customizations for T-Mobile and uh, the addition of the HSPA plus 42 megabit per second radio for T-Mobile. Got your 8 megapixel camera here. It also has a front video chat camera, LED flash, logo, speaker grill. Not very loud speaker, funny thing. Large phone, you think you get a really loud sound out of this, but no, you don't. And if you want to take the back off, what a pleasure it is to be able to do that. In this day and age of sealed phones, there it is. Full size SIM card, micro SD card slot, none is included. It does have 16 gigs of internal storage, so it's not like you're hurting for space to start out, but you can put a card in there. And 2500 milliamp battery, nice big battery in there. And now we have the T-Mobile version right here and the AT&T version, which happens to be in white. Uh, you're looking at pretty much the same phone, folks. But it'd be interesting to see. Here's the white, just in case it is available on T-Mobile. That's what it looks like. Glossy back on this instead of the matte back. I like the way the white looks myself. And here it is next to the Samsung Galaxy S3, so you can see the size difference. 4.8 inch display versus 5.3, so obviously the Note is going to be a bigger phone, and that's that's the thing, if you're trying to decide between these two phones, it's luxurious, it's lovely certainly to have this really big display. The, the note-taking features and drawing features are really neat, but it also depends on how big a phone you can tolerate. If you already think that the 4.8 inch Galaxy S3 is getting too big, well, clearly then the Galaxy Note is going to be too big for you. But if you say the bigger the better, you don't mind, well, the Note could be for you. One thing about the Note is it is very slim, so it doesn't take up that much pocket space. As long as you have a tall enough and a wide enough pocket to accommodate it, it really doesn't feel bulky in your pocket. And I know I've been carrying one around that white Galaxy Note. It's my personal phone, and I've had the international version. Really love it. I have to say, I missed it when I didn't have one. It's uh, like nothing else. It really is more like a pocket computer that happens to make phone calls, too. Speaking of call quality, here's the dialer. And you, you notice the offset over here? There's a new option for one-handed operation. You can set it to take up just a portion of the screen for the dialer and for the on-screen keyboard. So if you're holding it, say, with your right hand, you can, in theory, maybe reach all of these buttons without stretching too much. In practice, it really does depend just how big your hand and your fingers are as to whether that works. But anyway, this is what the dialer looks like in the one-handed operation mode. you got shortcuts to favorites, your contacts, your call log, all sorts of basic, nice, convenient, normal stuff there that we like to see. And call quality is excellent on the phone. Really nice loud, sharp, clear. Reception is good on the phone, I would say. It's average among T-Mobile HSPA plus 42 megabit phones with a 3G, 4G, and of course quad band, GSM, and Edge on it as well. No complaints there. It works nicely with Bluetooth. Good stuff. Data speeds on the phone have been quite good. I'll show you our speed test results that we've taken most recently. And you can see right here, really good download speeds that rival AT&T's LTE network. Now, we have good T-Mobile service here in the Dallas area, so that certainly helps. And you can see the upload speeds are lower because they cap uploads to ensure faster download speeds. So those are a lot slower than you'll see on LTE on Verizon or AT&T, but still, they're more than good enough for most people. And you can see the ping times are generally very good, except for that top one. And that's one thing that I've noticed. Uh, the, the the data service is very fast, but every once in a while you just get a little hiccup, a little stall, a web page can't be loaded, and it seems like sometimes those ping times or network connectivity just drop for a little second. But if you're a T-Mobile customer, you know how their service works in your area, so maybe you have better luck than we do, and again, most of the time it works just fine. In terms of software and UI, it's very much a touch whizzed phone. Uh, that means you're not going to see the standard stuff you would see on Ice Cream Sandwich. You don't swipe down and see the little settings widget up there, but you do get these handy wireless radio controls here. That's something that I really love. Just a quick way to get to all that stuff. 
And if we tap here, you can see there is no separation between apps and widgets. You're going to add widgets the same way you did on Gingerbread. Press and hold on the home screen to add widgets. And other than that, it's pretty much your standard Samsung stuff. And you can customize it. You can have it be an alphabetical grid. You can have a customized grid where you can create folders right here inside the app launcher, which is a pretty nice feature. And unlike HTC with their Sense, there is no separation of downloads. And also the Galaxy S3 has that feature. So your downloads are mingled in here with your other applications that are built in. We take a look at the software that's loaded on here. It's all the standard Samsung stuff that you get with the Galaxy Note, regardless of uh, whether well, it's international version, AT&T version, or the T-Mobile version. And that means you get the S Note, you get the S Memo. Those are pen-based applications that we'll show you. We've got Samsung's Media Hub on here. We've got DLNA All Share. We've got Wi-Fi Direct Connection. Polaris Office here, full version. Read, write, edit MS Office documents. And we have a whole lot of T-Mobile apps. T-Mobile has just been loving to toss a whole lot of apps on these phones. And uh, many of them are not removable. Oh, well, you maybe can hide them, but that's about it. We've got T-Mobile Caller ID called Name ID. T-Mobile TV will show you. Visual voicemail, that's nice to have. Account manager. The mobile hotspot feature, because this does act as a mobile hotspot. 411 and more. And then on the home screen, you can see that they've preloaded a bunch of widgets. I've actually hidden some of them already. They've got the bonus apps that they're pushing over here, which are all free apps you can get on the Android market anyway. This is Samsung's S Note widget. That's pretty cool. We'll also take a look at that. T-Mobile's mobile life is over here, so T-Mobile TV widget, all sorts of T-Mobile stuff here to keep you busy. The phone runs on the same 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S3 dual-core CPU with Adreno 220 graphics. That's uh, the same one that's used on the AT&T version, I should say. The international one has dual-core 1.4 GHz Exynos CPU. Now the S3, well, it's not the S4, is it, which is the latest, greatest CPU that you'll find on the Samsung Galaxy S3, but I'm not complaining too much because the S3 was a very capable CPU, also very fast, good graphics on it. And even if you're worried a little bit about being future-proof, honestly, there's nothing that the S3 can't do. I've played all sorts of demanding games on this. They work great. Uh, Web page load times are fine. So no complaints there, but I know that's going to be a little bit of a worry point for some of you who want to get the latest and greatest CPUs to last you through your two-year contract. On Quadrant, it scored a 3482, which is quite good. The Samsung Galaxy S3 scored closer to 5,000, though, so there, there's certainly a difference there. On 2 2, 64 64, which is right up there with the fast guys. Sun Spider 2740. We could stand to see a little bit of optimization there. I'd like to see a number closer to 2,000, but that said, web page rendering is fine on this. And Egypt off screen for GL benchmark testing is 55 frames per second, which is quite good. The fastest that you see is generally the lower 60s on the Galaxy S3. So how is it for gaming and multimedia? Let's check that out now. First we'll check out T-Mobile TV. We're going to stream this over their HSPA network. We've got our ESPN. It takes a while for it to buffer up to start playing and then it's going to improve in quality as it does buffer up. And now we've finally gotten sharp. Now it looks pretty nice. Certainly a pleasure on the big screen. Then we've also got on-demand programming too. And those of you who are T-Mobile customers already know it. And for your on-demand channels, you can see what's available right here. This is in the Prime lineup. Which I believe is 14 or 15 bucks a month. Nickelodeon, Disney, MTV, VH1, USA. Including sci-fi, including full episodes. And there's your full episode list that's available for sci-fi, for example. So, uh, normally we wouldn't spend that much time on something like T-Mobile TV, but given the huge screen here, I know a lot of you probably are thinking about using this as your portable entertainment device, so there you have it. And for web browsing, there's nothing like living large on a screen this big. You can actually read things without pinch zooming. Nice and smooth. We've got Adobe Flash support here. We've downloaded it from the market. Speeds are fine, and let's test out Flash. We'll watch our Nexus 7 video review. And again, we're doing this over T-Mobile's data network right now. We are not using Wi-Fi. 
Speaking of Wi-Fi, though, the phone does have Wi-Fi calling for those of you who want to save some money or don't have very good reception where you live or where you work. So here we go, full screen. Quite a nice way to watch Adobe Flash videos, isn't it? And of course you can use the YouTube player too, which is a, even better in terms of performance, generally speaking, than using Adobe Flash in the browser. Works great. And now we're going to take a look at Dead Trigger, a pretty demanding new game. Recently went free. Sadly, because people were pirating when it was 99 cents, but pretty cutting edge game, usually the something we test on Tegra 3 tablets, so we'll see how it goes here. I can tell you I've already played the first level and it went pretty well. Like shooting ducks. Plays really well. So clearly you don't need a Tegra 3 to play cutting edge games like this. Alright, so let's take a look at one of the things, one of the most special things that makes this a pretty neat device. We've got this S Pen here, we've got some note taking applications, we've got S Memo over here, we've even got a little widget over here if you want to quickly access what you've done, you can see you can put pictures in there, you can put voice in there, you can put text, you can put drawing in there. And if you got the pen here, you press down the little button, you press once, hold it, that took a screenshot. Now what what would you do with that screenshot? Because you might want to write on it, you might might want to make notes, that kind of thing. So I can do that. I can choose colors for this by the way and write notes that I think are important, all that kind of stuff. And if I press the button and tap twice, it takes a little practice sometimes, I can bring up the little mini version of the note-taking app. So if I just want to jot something down quickly, I can do so. I can also use the regular keyboard if I want to do that. Obviously you can erase here, you can undo, you can redo, and you can save the note. So that's pretty neat, and that existed even in Gingerbread, so you've seen that one before for the original Galaxy Note review that we did. But we've also got another application that's called S Note, and that is new, that's part of their premium S Pen applications for ICS. I'll show you that now. Now S Note is a lot like S Memo and it just does more stuff. Particularly what's interesting is this does handwriting recognition and it does formula recognition. So right now we're in viewing mode so we can use this to move around if this was a scrollable page. We haven't written enough, enough for it to be scrollable. We put it in edit mode and you can see tools appear here. So we can still draw right now. We've got the drawing thing selected. We can use this to actually make some pretty nice pictures. Pressure sensitivity press light, press heavy, you get a fatter line. And here you can see this is handwriting recognition if we press and hold this. We can choose formula recognition and here's the shape tidier. So say you're drawing some diagrams and your squares aren't too square and your circles aren't too round, you can use this to fix it. We're going to stick with handwriting recognition for now. Now here's an interesting thing. I did notice the difference between this guy and the 
AT&T version. The AT&T version is better at putting spaces between words. This likes to run all your words together, but the AT&T version stops and thinks every couple of words, so you have to wait and pause. And this guy seems to do a little bit better with handwriting recognition. Pretty weird, running the same OS, running the same version of this application, but... So it does a pretty good job. You can see there I don't have beautiful handwriting, but again, it is appending words together. That's a little bit annoying. Now, of course, you could hit the space between every word you're writing, but who would want to do that? Other than that, I'm enjoying it pretty well. It does very well with formula recognition, as you can see. I think it's even better than the handwriting recognition, which is pretty interesting. And for your graphic artist types, yes, you can do things just like drawing. And here we can choose our color. We can choose infinite colors. Say I want something like that color right there. Choose my pen thickness. And you can draw, you know, however you see fit. We're not going to go and do a whole drawing right here, but you can do some pretty nice stuff with this. And we've downloaded Adobe Reader, which has nice support for editing for editable PDFs here. And if you have a pen, it's that much more useful. So we're going to bring up our tools here. And we've got strike through, we've got underline. We're going to try underlining, and you can see we already underlined one line. Just like that, I can underline anything I want. If I want to strike through something, just like that. Can add regular text. Can magic marker. Can do something really cool here, which is the add digital signature, which you could do even if you didn't have an active digitizer here. That feature exists. But in this case, well, it's actually much easier to do because you've got a pen right here, so you can, you know, sign it just as you see fit. And my name is John Smith. So pretty neat for those of you who need to sign agreements on the go. Can do it and can do it where the signature that actually doesn't look like you did it with your finger. Nice. And there are other Penaware applications. Samsung has some showcase in their own little application store. You can just find some on the market. We've downloaded a couple like Quill right here. Works quite well. Now, Android 4 has good support for the pen, so that really helps apps along for working with this. Works fine. So pretty much all of your Penware applications are going to work with this. They may not all support pressure sensitivity, but they're all going to be very useful and much more precise in trying to do, you know, oh my, that's just like a lot harder, right? So nice feature of the Samsung Galaxy Note. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note for T-Mobile. Hopefully it will be available pretty soon. Uh, price, when we know, we will put that on our review and on our website, mobiletechreview.com. Certainly one of the neater Android phones on the market and very unique. Not just the big 5.3 inch high resolution display, but that, that pen input is pretty cool. Great for watching videos, obviously. Also nice for looking at photos, uh, working with documents, uh, signing documents in Adobe Reader, as you saw. Pretty cool stuff. Phone has 16 gigs of storage. Again, it's a 1.5 gigahertz S3 Qualcomm CPU. That's a dual core CPU. A gig of RAM. Front video chat camera, rear 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. Now that camera is pretty good and I enjoyed it quite a bit on the Note, but let's face it, the Note is now more than a half year old technology and the Samsung Galaxy S3 does have an improved camera that looks even better in terms of exposure and sharpness. Not that the one on the Note's bad, it's still one of the nicer camera phones on the market, but it doesn't hold up to the Galaxy S3. It has the usual Wi-Fi, dual band, Bluetooth, GPS that works quite well with GLONASS support. Phone also has Wi-Fi calling, obviously it has HSPA plus 42 megabit per second as well. And you can see we have NFC here with Android Beam and we've got Wi-Fi Direct as well. Uh, besides Android Beaming, not too much you can do with NFC just yet, but hopefully something good will be coming in terms of mobile payment systems. 
Phone has a 2500 milliamp battery. Battery life on this is decent given the size of the screen and the fast CPU. It lasts, for, for me, it's been lasting a whole day on a charge. It's 2500 milliamps, which is bigger than you'll find in the Galaxy S3, uh, the HTC One, uh, other high-end phones. But it needs it because it is powering this bigger display and the active digitizer. So battery life is similar to what you would see on other high-end phones, not better, even though it has a larger capacity battery. So the Samsung Galaxy Note isn't the new kid on the block, obviously. It came out in December 2011 first overseas, and now we're in, well, July going into August. It's still a very useful contemporary and fast phone. And for those of you who worried, well, what about the Samsung Galaxy Note 2? Remember, those are only rumors. My suspicion is we won't see that in the U.S. probably until early 2013. This is a, a big flagship phone with a lot of work Samsung has to do because of the pen integration and I think that they're not going to be upgrading this guy like every six months or every nine months even. And that Galaxy Note announcement that's due in the middle of August that looks to be from the folks who make tablets and not from the phone group. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the Galaxy Note 2 if you're going to buy this. Just go ahead and get it. Is it a great phone? I think it is. Is it a large phone? Yes, it certainly is. But for those of you who are open to large phones and really want to be able to do as much as possible on your device, this big screen, fast CPU, allow for that kind of thing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.